Minister, thanks for your time. What sort of research will this funding go to? Well, the national collaboration or collaborative research infrastructure uh, strategy is about getting universities uh, across the country working together on things that matter most to the Australian economy and community. It's about 50,000 researchers will be supported through this $650 million investment, looking, for example, at things uh, like uh, advances in medicines and biomed, uh, through to energy, uh, quantum technology, uh, transport and defence. Um, and uh, it, it provides a way in which uh, we can make new discoveries that can lead to making new products right here in this country. Manufacturing does require a lot of thinking and work behind the, uh, behind the scenes to keep improving the way we make things and to make them more efficient, make them cheaper uh, to produce. Mm. So these type of investments, like the NCRIS investment that we're making and that we've announced, both Jason Clare and I, is really an investment in longer-term Australian manufacturing. You, you mentioned a couple of industries there. I want to pick up on one, Biomed. Uh, we've been great researchers for so long, this country, uh, in that space mm. particularly, but many others as well. As you know better than most, we've discussed it before, one of the challenges is taking the research and commercialising it. The Americans do it well. We've not done it that well traditionally. In fact, lost a bit of our, our intellectual capital and this great research we do over the years. Is some of this funding going into that? Well, it makes sure this funding, the $650 million, that you've got the research infrastructure, modern equipment uh, available uh, for researchers to go and develop their ideas and then think through how they can commercialise them because sometimes things that work well in a lab environment just doesn't translate out in the real world, if I can... Uh, put it that way. Uh, universities now are more and more about providing what they call shared assets. So, for example, small and medium enterprises, particularly our startups, that are real problem solvers in this country, they will look at the way in which uh, they can use some of this uh, university research infrastructure uh, to be able to test some of their ideas, test the products, and help in that commercialisation problem that you mentioned, and helping in really significant ways. Uh, I'm standing here uh, in, at ANU, at the Australian National Fabrication uh, Facility. They're looking at, for example, how do they make pain-free uh, diabetes uh, tests or medicines. Uh, they're also looking at, for example, the creation of uh, improved sensors for driverless vehicles that might be used in a defence context or in a civil. Uh, they're looking at quantum technology. And here in Canberra, Kieran, there is a a mob nomad atomics that is dropping atoms from the sky to be able to identify critical minerals below and speed up the discovery process for resources that are in high demand globally. Having our researchers work in uh, really in that way, really important longer term for the economy and our community. And is, is the funding designed in a way where institutions might collaborate, say where one group at ANU is doing world-leading uh, research and then collaborate with another institution, whether it be in Sydney or Melbourne, to mm. make the most of the research that's being done. Is the funding done in a nimble way that enables that collaboration? Absolutely. I mean, that's why we, we say, if you look at it, it's the uh, NC, you know, NCRIS, National Collaborative Research Infrastructure. We want people to work together. We want to bring our great minds from you know, the lab bench through the, the factory floor, working together uh, to be able to ensure that we're a country that makes things, that we have a future made in Australia. And we want universities to be working with each other, to team up and to get the biggest bang for the buck. So it's not just hiving off some of this money of the $650 million to one university and they are just territorial and hold onto it and then give money to another university in another part of the country. Wherever they can work together, it's really important. Uh, that that happened. I was here with uh, Professor Brian Schmidt, who's heading up ANU and just about to finish his term as Vice-Chancellor. He was one of the, the leading thinkers for this program. He wanted to do exactly what you said, Kieran, in your question, that is to get universities uh, teaming up, working closer together, so that we got the greatest chance of success and we use that money really efficiently.
Universities have been very excited as well, those I've spoken to in the recent period after the AUKUS announcement and the finalisation of the, the plan with the United States. The Prime Minister's in Washington now. They're confident of getting some of those final export controls eased by Congress. But at, at the university and research level, does this funding uh, provide support for those AUKUS-related technologies? There will be some projects that are covered uh, by this NCRIS announcement, the $650 million, uh, that might have crossovers. So it's $650 million uh, over four years, targeting 80 different projects run by 25 different facilities and with 50,000 researchers involved. So there's a lot of scope for us to be able to, in some of the work done in one area, to then stretch it out elsewhere. And that's just the nature of research. You might start at one point and end up somewhere else in terms of the product and where we can apply it because in AUKUS itself, as much as people think that AUKUS is about building those subs, there's a whole lot in what's known as Pillar 2 of the AUKUS agreement, which is around cutting-edge technology, like quantum, for example, that I mentioned earlier. So any of the breakthroughs that we make that we can apply as part of AUKUS, they could potentially be unleashed by this $650 million investment in Australian ideas that Jason, Claire and I have announced in this latest round. Well, it's a big deal, a lot of money. I know it's part of a, uh, a broader $4 billion package over a longer period. But uh, yeah. to give us a bit of insight, Ed Husey, I appreciate yep. your time today. Thanks so much for it. Thanks heaps, Kieran.